How are you all? So I'm just busy uh, um, ironing. <laughs> just ironing me little pieces, getting ready. <laughs> uh, are you all okay? I hope you all are. Um, happy, happy Tuesday. Uh, it's uh, what a lovely bank holiday yesterday, wasn't it? Uh, I sewed all day. It's quite nice though, because it was quite peaceful. I had uh, Marvel films on in the background, which was lovely, because uh, I love the Marvel films, and it's not like I haven't seen them a million times. But I had those on in the background. Sewed all day. It was a very rel relatively quiet day. Um, how are you all? Are you all okay though? Hopefully you all had a good bank holiday. Let me know what you got up to and if you did anything fun. Um, the weather is revolting again today. It's, I swear to God it thinks it's October or November, not August. Um, so uh, we're having a little panic hoping this air traffic control nonsense doesn't interrupt our holiday which is uh, a week tomorrow a week tomorrow I can't wait <laughs> um, although my husband did inform me he's gonna be home for three weeks well, that's that's not a good thing <laughs> I love him to bits obviously I'm doing this whole renewal thing but three weeks oh we don't live together not full-time he's like He's worked away for like 15 years now. I like the bed to myself three nights a week. <laughs> but never mind. I'm sure I'll cope just for three weeks. Um, I might want to murder him at the end of it, but I'm sure I'll cope. <laughs> How are you all? Let's say hello to some people. So, uh, hi, Marion. Hi, Natalie. Oh, where's my cursor gone? There it is. Uh, hi, Karen. Hi, Kate. Hi, Anne. Hello, lovelies. Um, so today we are going to be doing, uh, I've called it Let's Go Fishing. So these have been on my Pinterest for years, years and years. Uh, hi Eileen, yeah, it's very autumnal, isn't it lovely? Um, and there's like hundreds of patterns out there for them, but um, I wanted mine slightly different. So as per usual, I wrote no pattern. Uh, we're gonna make some fishes. Um, they can be used as decorations. You, know, you can just, if you've got a nice piece of driftwood or something and hung them all up, they could be really, really cute for using as decorations. Um, I really enjoyed making them actually because just pulling out my scraps from my scrap bucket. Um, little man has already commandeered two of the ones I made because he wanted them. Uh, just think it's your honeymoon. It is, it is. Oh god, I've got to do all that again. Bloody hell. Whew, never mind, it'll be fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, little man's already commandeered two of them because I saw him on Sunday and he was just like, ah, fish. Bless him, he's just started to talk now, finally at two and a half little words so fish fish he loves fish and birds so um and buses randomly um so so he's already come did too but i thought we'd have a little go at these you could vary the size so i've done a um, let me go to the overhead um hopefully this is working over here um uh, it's a very simple little pattern you don't need much more than this um particularly as i'm going to show you so um i've made some of these to um i use little tiny scraps They'd be brilliant if um, you could put catnip in them. I was thinking for those of you who do craft stores and stuff. Uh, hi, Carolyn. Uh, you're feeding Jake and Ollie. They look interesting. What should I say? Yeah, indeed. These would be good for you, lovely. If you do, um, like I said, if you do craft stalls and stuff, you could put catnip in these as catnip toys. Um, you know, they've just got a bit of stuffing in them. But I also thought as well, you could put magnets in, the, in here. You can get little sewing magnets, can't you? And then you could do that let's go fishing game you know where they put a magnet and they have to like try and catch a fish and stuff um you could i'm happy for you guys if you want the pattern to scale this up or down to make different sized fish and things i was thinking you could put or if you just want to do them with these loops maybe use a um a piece of cord rather than a bit of ribbon so it's more of a loop and you could put them all in a bucket or like that and then you could do a hook on a stick couldn't you try and get them to pull the fish out but I think they're really cute just as decorations. I'm going to finish this one and, and the one that we're going to look today and I'm going to hang them up. I just think they're really sweet. They were brilliant for um, using scraps up as well. Fat eights, I think if you had three fat eights, you'd get at least two fish out of three fat eights, which is why I'm going to put the fat eights um, on sale when I get back to the shop. Keep a little eye out on the fat eight bundles because I'm going to, um, going to do a random fat eight, eight daily deal which we haven't done a daily deal for ages so first things first we're going to cut out our little template okay so i've done the template for you i've written you've written your gap for turning here where the eye placement is where your bit of ribbon goes if you want to put ribbon in there to hang them and then some lines for a line and seams you will need three rectangles of fabric okay so while i cut this out i'm just going to talk you through that so you need two rectangles 
Uh, they can be different because one's for the head, one's for the tail, and they need to be three and a half by ten and a half. Um, you can actually get away with ten. So if you're using fat eights, it's very easy to, to do ten. I've written ten and a half just because that gives you a teeny bit of wiggle room. But I've actually cut ten and you'll see you can do it at a ten. Um, and then you need one which is the middle section, which is five and a quarter by ten and a half. Again, ten if you want it to be. Okay. And then you're gonna cut your template out. Okay, you could draw your own if you want to, you know, but I've done it for you. It's only a pound, it's on the digital downloads for those of you who want it. So trying to keep an eye as well. So anybody, what did everybody get up to at bank holiday? Did you all have, did anybody meet up with friends? Did you sew all day like I did? What did you get up to? Anything interesting? Sarah went to see um, Hawkwind at Chepstow Castle. Apparently the lead singer's 82, still going strong. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna do this one pink. Again, this is my scrap bucket. I'm just pulling out a little bit. So I've got a piece of the head, piece of the tail. These are three and a half by ten and a half, and then five and a quarter, five and a quarter. I think I said that wrong earlier. Five and a quarter by ten and a half for the body. Really simple to start with. We are just going to pop these right sides together, quarter inch along the long edges. Okay, so like that, like that, quarter inch, inch either side to create a piece of fabric. If you don't want to bother doing this and you wanted a fish that was all one colour, just what would it be? It'd be uh, three and a half, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, yeah, twelve by ten and a half would be more than big enough. Okay, just uh, didn't do much, but spent time with family. Ah, oh, lovely, Anne, that sounds cool. You could do it with like just the tail is different or just the head's different. Play around with them. You know, make a piece of um, crumb quilting, you know, and use that in the centre and stuff. All sorts of things you can do. So I'm just going to pop a pin in there. In there, and I'm going to go over to the machine and sew down quarter inch both sides. So, um, over here, hopefully. Uh, so, Sunday, met up with friends uh, in Scotland. Ah, oh, lovely, fabulous. Um, I did watch a little bit of Seamless Sunday on Crate and Craft actually, just, just a couple of hours. Uh, again, it was on in the background while I was pootling. Um, to see what it was because they've booked us for seamless sunday on creating craft uh later in the year i think it's actually november they're doing it again it might be december i can't remember now um but it's um it's a really demo heavy um you know lots and lots of tips and tricks type the type thing so uh look keep an eye out for that as well there we go hi carol how are you lovely so and then I'm going to go a quarter of an inch down the other side. There we go. Oh, can't wait to have my nails done. I've, don't look. If Meg's Meg's looking, Meg's watching. Don't look. Watch Meg because uh, my nails are terrible. I managed to because we were gardening a bit on Sunday. I managed to destroy all my uh, nail nail polish. She'll get. She'll be mad at me, which she will when she sees me. But she's got to do my nails nicely, ready for the holiday. <laughs> Here we go. Right. Okay. So let's go over back over here. Over we go. And I'm just going to open this one out. Okay. So um, I found that opening uh, opening the seams up, pressing the seams open on this one was better. I know we don't normally do that on quilt with quilting, but for this sort of like you know fun little project, it actually made everything lie a bit flatter. So, pressure seams open on this one. What's that, Natalie? You've been attempting to crochet again, managed to do the chain and the first line of double stitch, but now lost it again. Craft club, lazy to see if you can get to oh, it. bless you. You can do it, love. You can do it. If you can, if anybody who can sew or knit, you can crochet, I promise you. There we go. So, so my seams open like that. All right, and I've got my piece then for my fishy. Fold this in half lengthways and just sort of match up those seams the best you can. Make sure they're kind of lying together. And then this is where you need your template. Okay, so you can see I am a little bit close on this one. I've drawn some lines on the template, which you're going to line approximately with your seams, which, you know, they kind of do on this one, which is nice. And then I'm going to have to tuck a pin in like that. Just hold it down. There we go. Move that out, back out of the way. And then you can either draw around this or you can cut around it. Okay, I actually find it easier just to actually see on the front pen that works. Draw around. Okay, so you're going to draw all the way around your template like this. 
I thought this would be a really cute mobile as well for a baby. You could make them in all really bright colours or, you know, really like contrasting colours um, and then hang them on a mobile or something in a nursery would be really, really cute. Um, I thought, you know, for the garden as well, they'd be really cute. You know, out instead of bunting, you could have like fishies everywhere. This one says they look like sardines all hung up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like the idea, I thought about it and like the idea of putting magnets in so you could make one of those fishing games. So, all the way around. Oh, it's moving in a bit, there we go. Like that. Okay, and then I would just, because you know how rubbish I am, mark where my turning gap is, like that. Just to remind me to stop, stop sewing, start and stop sewing there. Pin together, there and there. And the bit that I kept forgetting was to put my string in. You don't have to put strings in them. If you're making these as like cat toys or something, although actually hung up with cat nip in for a cat would be quite good, wouldn't it? But if you don't want to put the, the little hanging loop in, you can ignore this step, all right? But you want a little little loop of, I'm using a bit of cotton India tape, but a bit of ribbon. What's that? Um, what do I want it to be? Like four inches? Like four inches long is fine. Again, you can vary this. Okay, fold it over like that. And where on the template it says to put the ribbon up in his nose, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to pop it in so that it's the loops inside my fishy, like that. And it's coming out just up through my nose. Through his nose, rather. Not up through my nose, that would be gross. Morning, Karen, how are you, lovely? There we go, afternoon actually, isn't it? Not morning at all. Right, I'm pinning that in place. What I'm going to do now is you're just going to stitch all the way around, leaving a gap for turning. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around it and not stitch this little bit here. So, back over we go. Here we go. So, I'm going to start just there, like that, and stitch away. So I'm just following that line. So this is really easy stitching. And I think as well, if you're making for like charities or craft stalls or anything, you know, these are really cheap and cheerful to make. And they look quite effective, but they're also really good for like chain pieces. So you could sit and draw them all out and then um, put all. Hi, Patricia. Sorry, I hope you are. Ah, oh, that's all right. I am lovely. I hope you are too, babes. Um, okay, as you're going around the curve, uh, it's going to be a surprise you completed it. It's lovely. I'll show you the fish in a minute. <laughs> um, just as you're going around the curves, remember to take little small steps of stitches, two or three at a time, just to get you around that line nice and neatly. If you try and force it round, you won't get as nice a curve. Right, down that straight to the point there. Oh, don't stub yourself with the pins. That's never a good thing. And then round we go again. Yeah, when you've got a tight curve, just take your time on the tight curves. It is worth it. Oh, a couple more there. You could also take your stitch length down a little bit. I didn't on this one, but I did on the others. Take it down to like 2, 1.82. When you're making like toys and stuff, I think having a um, smaller st um, stitch length just really helps, You know, particularly when you're stuffing and you're pushing through and things. There we go. All the way around. that long curve there. I think the tail takes the longest bit, just getting around those little curves. I suppose you're thinking about it as well, if you wanted to add fins to them, you could make little prairie points and you could insert those in as well, couldn't you, to make little fins on them. Again, round the top, a couple of stitches there, get a nice neat edge, and back down that side. And then all the way back to the beginning to where that gap needs to be and then just reverse back so that it's not it doesn't you know come undone okay right that's kind of all most of the sewing done guys I told you this is going to be a quickie today so we're then going to take all the pins out like that and then you're going to cut it out okay now again trusty pink and shears because i did not want to have to cut into all of those curves so if you do it with pink and shears, you don't have to. Okay, and then we're just cutting it about eighth of an inch away from the seam allowance. Just be careful. 
as you go, like that. Around that edge there. And around again. It'd be quite fun actually to reduce the pattern down and make lots of little ones to go with a couple of big ones. I think that'd be quite cute. And we go around that bit there. And then back at the other side. Right, when you get to the turning gap, leave this big, don't trim this down. I found it so much easier when I was doing them. Um, where do we go? I'll show you what I mean. So, because I've left the gap on a straight bit, when I get to the gap, just leave that like not trimmed. It gave me much more to play with when I was trying to turn it under and you know, after the stuffing is so up, and it didn't affect it at all. There we go. The only thing I need to do is just, obviously, because this was just folded, is just snip through that turn gap. Okay, so I've left quite a bit big seam allowance on that one. We can trim it down a little bit, but no need. Oh, there's a lot of needles out there today. Turn it all through, guys. Turn it all through. Hi there, how are you, lovely? You all right? Can you buy a full bolt of fabric? Yes, you can buy a full bolt of fabric. You need to um, give us a shout in the shop, either ring us or drop us a message, which you want, and we then can check whether we can get it or not for you. We might already have it in stock. But if not, we can check whether we can get it in. Um, we have lots of ladies who buy buy full bolts, um, you know, particularly if it's like a you know white on white or a grunge, that's something they use regularly. So we've got the old uh, knitting needle that I like to use, round like that, and just press this out, okay, all round that seam. So obviously, be careful not to put your seam through. There we go, like that. Oh, there we go giving that a wiggle where that little tight gap is if you kind of wiggle the seam it really does help okay there we go so you don't want to give this an iron all right uh, oh i don't know what he is it's like a cooked salmon now he's only this color <laughs> give it give him an iron i don't know i'm calling him she she might be a she she might be a female salmon there we go Roll that out, and then where I've left that big that gap, and I've left that extra fabric. Can you see it's tucked in really nicely because I've left that extra, which was so much easier when I was sewing it together. Okay, so you've got your little fishy done like that. Okay, you're then going to go ahead and stuff him, which is what I've done here already. I've stuffed him. Um, good old IKEA cushions, uh, the one pound fifty ones. Rip them open, you know, cut along the innard, and then pull out all the stuffing. It's by far the quickest way to do it. So you're then just going to close this up, okay? I'm not going to do that bit of stitching now because you've seen us do that a thousand times. But you're just going to sew that up, okay? Just with a little ladder stitch, sew up the gap. And then you can kind of decorate him up. Now, I've gone with just buttons because I just like the, the button eye on it, okay? But you could add, you know, any sort of thing. You could add um, more stitching around his tail. You could just do like a running stitch all the way around and then pull to give that a bit of dimension. You could do the same around his head. You could add on, you know, like rip rack and stuff, hand sew bits and pieces on if you wanted to. Uh, see, <laughs> uh, I did get, I did have this one. Yes, one of these ironing mats, I really quite like them. <laughs> do you do end of roll fabrics as well? We do, if you check out our do uh, job lot section on our website, um, you will find that there are ends of rolls on there, okay? So I want a biggish needle with a biggish eye because I'm going to use um, like cotton perlite to put my buttons on. If you don't want to put buttons on, if these are for a little one, you can absolutely just stitch this eye through. Um, you would just do like French knot type eye if you don't want to have to put buttons on, or you could do safety eyes if you wanted to. Um, yeah, I thought I'd give one a go, give one of these ironing mats a go, and I am loving it, I have to say, really am loving it, it's definitely worth it. So, I'm going to, again, you've got the eye placement, okay, which if you line up the seam like that, it's about there, which is there, but there's nothing stopping you, you know, giving them all sorts of quirky eyes. So, all I did was do a little back stitch, and I found it easier to put on both eyes at once. So, a little back stitch. I did that wrong, didn't I? There we go, one there. I'm going through again, and then just through my loop like that, just to tighten it all down and knot it off. And yeah, like I said, I find it much, much easier to put on both eyes at once. So, threaded on my button, 
back through the eye there and I want to come out the other side and I'm sure if you've made toys you've all done this before um, okay and then button on the other side so through like that make sure you're in the right place come back through and then this is the fun bit where you've got to try and make sure you come up the hole there we go which is why I like a big needle because it's easier and then give it a real good pull again which is why I use a stronger thread too rather than sewing thread but you could I suppose just double up the thread if you wanted to so we're gonna pull to give him that little indentation like that with his little eye and back again so I went through about three or four times just to make sure it was nice and secure and again, a bit kind of trying to wiggle it where's the needle there it is <laughs> There we go. I didn't overstuff them as well. I didn't want them to be really fat fish. <laughs> like that. And then I kind of went back through just one side. Like that. Come on. Oh, no, it's too far. Just got to manipulate it. Go back through like that. There we go. Come on. And then round a few times. Like that, just to secure it. And then come out dig it in and come it out over here somewhere all the way over there you've got this is again why a big needle so that you can pull that right through like that and if oh got it sticky there i've got to get rid of there you go and then if you pull it tight like that chop him off and he's all in okay so obviously when i've sewn this one up that's my little fish done okay and then you can just pop your fishes together like I said they make great catnip toys um, you know just for the cats to play with and you know, hang them on a little string for them to bat in and smother because they do like the catnip don't they um, but I also think they're lovely decorations I really do I am gonna I've got a, like a driftwood branch that I might get my husband to mount up and just dangle them from it because I think they'd be I'm gonna come back over to the overhead now um, not the overhead over here mm. I just think they're really cute. I really like them. You know, you could vary the height and size that you hold them so they're like a little little pile of fishes. Um, like I said, Jonah Benjamin thinks they're really fun. And he's been, you know, a little man's been uh, playing with, you know, he's commandeered two of them. I had to make some more. Uh, you can make lots of fish and add magnets. Yes, we were just talk we were talking about that at the beginning. You could use felt, brilliant. Yeah, you could absolutely use felt for that. Um, if I was giving them to kids, you'd, I'd use, I wouldn't put buttons on. I'm not, you know, um, the ones that Jonah's got, I've just done, um, I've just got sewn through and done like, you know, French knots. So they've got little eyes so that there's nothing there for a little one to come off. But I think they'd be cute as a mobile. You know, you could hang them up on a, on a mobile in a baby's bedroom, really bright colours and stuff. Um, and we were talking about putting magnets in the end. If you put a magnet here on the end rather than the loop, you could then put them in a bucket, couldn't you? You could make a little fabric basket, put them in the bucket and then, you know, magnet on the end and play that get that fishing game so um hi yes i know you lovely hi <laughs> hi alan um there we go so yeah lots and lots of um ideas you can play around with these i like them just as as decorations you yeah, know i think they'd be cute hung up just more dust magnets my husband would call them you're like why you just they're just going to create dust oh yeah they are but they're cute i like them so that's it from today real little quickie one today because it was a quick little project um tomorrow we've got the quilt along which is um at 7 p.m so it's all fenced in we're going to do the epp what block which is the last of the blocks and then we're going to talk about putting the whole thing together so i'm going to show you how to do the block and then we're going to talk about doing the whole thing so it might be a bit bit of a longer one tomorrow so starting at seven tomorrow um there's that and then says back on thursday at one o'clock i can't remember she, oh pencil case ready back to school pencil case so that's what she's going to do on Thursday. So, um, so yeah, I will see you tomorrow at 7, guys. Hope you have a nice day. I'm going to go find a jumper or a cardi before I go back over to the shop because it's freezing out there. Um, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.